Well, he's using Greek chorus and all. Where is that? What is that love story? Mm -hmm. The nice. Aphrodite. I mean, the idea is so good. Yeah, know? but he, I don't know. Yeah. They've adopted a child, and you won't know who is a mother, and the mother is a call girl of yeah. children. And he's trying to look for a nice man for her. Yeah. her and Just to uh, warm you up and warm this conversation up, I'm going to ask you to start by describing to me um, one of your favorite comic sequences. Anything that comes to your mind. Oh, um, see, most of it is uh, outside of here. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, fine. Like there's a lot of things in Marx Brothers. So describe a Marx Brothers sequence to me. The first thing that comes to mind. Well, there's a scene in the in the beginning, night at the opera. See, they have got similar kind of structuring. Yeah. So, same, I'll describe two scenes yeah. in the two different films. Yeah. So, there's a scene in Night of the Opera right at the beginning, which it, the film opens with a opera performance. Mm. And uh, Groucho wants to sign the singer. Mm. Now, he wants to sign another singer, the main singer, but uh, he so he goes to the backstage. Mm. And Chico stops him yeah. and he says, you can't go in. He says, uh, well, I want to go and uh, sign him up. He says, uh, you have to meet his agent. He says, who is the agent? He says, I am the agent. He says, okay, then uh, let's sign, you know. And he takes out a contract and he gives it to Chico. Now, there is a lot of play in between. The Chico doesn't know, he is illiterate, he can't read. So he pretends, uh, you know, it is not in focus or something and then basically Groucho starts reading. Now the whole takeoff is somewhere else. Now see, I, when I am a comic director, so I am trying to wonder how the hell they are going to build, you know. And yeah. the whole, it's a five minute sequence. So they build a gag on a gag on a gag on a gag, yeah. you know, a lovely pyramid. Yeah. So basically he starts reading and he says, okay, the first time reading. The party of the first part hereby will be called party of the first part and the party of the second part hereby will be called party of the second part. Do you like it? He says, I, I, I don't understand, read it again. Something like that. So he reads it again, he says, this time it is better. Read the first part of the party of the first part. So they, there is, so finally they, the idea is, he says, you don't like it, so they tear the contract and he wants to tear that part. Then they read the second term, which again they don't, sometimes it is, I don't think I'm going to like it. So he tells it so that I tell it. Finally, they just exchange signatures. You know, so there are eight, ten terms and the variations, you see. No, those variations can't be scripted. Yeah. You know, but uh, there is a scripting somewhere. Yeah. So this whole, uh, they used to build on this, uh, I don't know, what the give and take. Yeah, between, yeah. And it is always between uh, Groucho and Chico, this yeah. kind of thing, you know. Yeah. So there is another sequence in uh, Day at the Races. Hmm where uh, similar, absolute similar structure, but total different uh, uh, content. Where Groucho comes running and he wants to place the bet on a horse. He's the last, you know, he's just making it. The window is going to close and he says, uh, $50 on uh, blackjack. Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, Chico is selling Tutti Frutti ice cream. Mm -hmm. And he's a tutti frutti ice cream and all he's saying. And he says, you're going to back on, uh, I mean, you're going to back on uh, blackjack? Says, yeah, what's wrong? He says, do you know the pedigree? He says, what is pedigree? He says, got to know. The, you know, who, who was his father, who was his mother. <laughs> so how do I know? He, don't tell me you don't have that uh, directly. He says, what is that directly? So from that ice cream thing, he takes out one big telephone directory kind of a stuff. Mm. You know? And it is all, it is a telephone directory, but he says, this is it. And he says, how much does it cost? He says, two dollars. He says, now, he says, what is this? He says, for this you've got to have that director. He says, what is that director? He says, but without, you don't have the director, then this director is useless. So, he buys the two. So, finally, he's holding three directors here, three directors here, three here and all, and then he ends up giving fifty dollars, whatever, I'm just... Yeah. And this guy goes and bets on the same blackjack, same the same horse, and he... So, <laughs> so these are things, there are various, uh, mm. you know, uh, mm. see that, that's mm. the kind of, see, you now what is nice about this kind of comedy is mm. there's very really little plotting. Yeah. yeah. 
actually uh, that was uh, something that I was going to ask I mean uh, ask you next Woody Allen had said uh, and he says keep saying it that comedy requires Spartan direction you know and he keeps talk Spartan direction he keeps talking about you how you can't over direct how you have to repress all these urges because you're a comic filmmaker you have to repress all these urges that other filmmakers can indulge you know of, of trying different kind of camera movements and over directing and you know all of that yeah, yeah it but, uh, work, but yeah. Is, is that something is that something absolutely, that you, absolutely. do you think that applies you, uniformly Spartan meaning uh, you have to respect what is in front of the lens it's as simple as that it, it's almost you can say comedy is long shot tragedy is close up you just yeah. keep the camera even in this very sequence which I told you it yeah. is an MGM film uh, Night at Opera yeah. you see it the whole thing is basically in two shot and whenever the camera cuts because they've taken close ups for safety or to jump from one long shot to another long shot by intercutting and all but whenever they intercut, there's a major jump and you don't want, you want the long shot to continue, whatever it is. So you imagine the technique disappears, you know, the camera disappears. Yeah. They're just watching, you see. So this basically... And in that sense, it's, it, would you say that it's closer, you have to bring it closest to theatre? Uh, because, because, because Yeah, you have to capture it as it is, you know. It depends yeah. upon how important the hands are and how important everything else yeah. is. So what frame... Yeah. Framing you do, and it's not nothing, no great uh, yeah. Yeah. puzzle how to frame that yeah. shot. Yeah. So basically, it is. It amounts to that. Yeah. Uh, which you know, which there's this other thought that Chaplin always said that comedy, again, another way when you're writing comedies, another restrictive thing is it has to be very close to realism. You know, because it's only out of really real situations that <laughs> um, comedy can be structured. Yeah, I know. I, see, this is very difficult to answer. You see, he must yeah. have said with a certain reference yeah. to context. Yeah. But you always, uh, that I also work with Mr. Lakshman, Vagdi Ki Dunia, who is absolutely, you know, though his cartoons are sometimes so absurd, you know, like he says flat with the sea view. So you go into the balcony and there's a big sea drawn, you know. <laughs> so he doesn't got a sea view, but it is the alphabet sea. You know? Like <laughs> one I saw, where there is one man standing in the balcony and his balcony is projecting into somebody's drawing room. So he's brushing his teeth and that guy is looking, reading newspaper. <laughs> Which is always a duple flat in some Yeah, but come on, this is as real as things Yeah, so happen. what happens is I this whole... Reality, in fact. Yeah, so, so you, know, you know, you take it from real. Yeah. You get your inspiration is there, but now then... I don't think you can get confined to it. It is your observation power, it is your uh, this, that, you combine it, your imagination, whatever you can yeah. make of it. Yeah. But it does go into uh, different, uh, this thing. It starts off on a real level. Yeah. Like you take Chaplin's uh, uh, the, the, the Modern Times, the opening sequence, long half an hour sequence, where he's just, a, you know, what do you call assembly, mm -hmm. you know, he's fixing the bolts, you know. But then the takeoff, it is the most surreal takeoff. He goes, he misses the thing, you know. So he's going, going, and that belt is going inside the machine. So he goes in, inside the machine and he's going round the cog, you know, inside. Yeah. You know, the whole Chaplin is t twisting, turning inside. Yeah. So now that is not real, but yeah, yeah. it is takeoff. I think what he was talking about was, uh, because he didn't explain himself, but I think what he was talking about is that the universe has to relate to something real like you that can't make it fantastical That's in the sense that adventures or romance romances can be fantastical you know you have to um, that doesn't mean every scene has to be real but the the foundation has to be yeah, in reality you have to relate, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's, yeah. That's. but you know what i want to talk to you about next is character writing you know it's um, when you see the character of the tramp or when you see even woody allen's character which is the same character which Pathology. is which is, is you know so there's that neurosis. Woody Allen is neurotic. Yeah, neurotic and he cynical. He always feels, and he keeps on, uh, yeah. nice is that, and his characters are to some extent neurotic. Yeah, you neurotic know. and very cynical, you know, my, mildly cynical or ranging from mildly to largely He's cynical. He's a pathological, uh, yeah. pathological Yeah, and then yeah. there is someone like Chaplin. He's got a problem, he's got a, too many, he's got a pathological complex. Inferiority complex, pathological yeah. inferiority yeah, But he is channeling himself, I mean, to, to such a large yeah, extent. Yeah, so, which is something that yeah, Chap absolutely. Chaplin also said, the tramp was a part of me that I had to channel, you know. And there is this really humble, sad character, the tramp, you know, but very, very humble in, 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 in his own way, very humane, very sad. Um, these characters, what's interesting is the way these characters are written. You know, on the surface, they're just funny characters, but there's so much depth. Yeah, see, this is the comedy, there are two comedies, yeah. actually, in mm. a way. Yeah. This is the character-driven comedy. Hmm. 
even on television there are uh, tony bennett here we don't have much yeah we had uh, this gentleman to some extent uh, bhatti hmm. you know uh, yeah. ulta pulta yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. you know and some serials yeah. he did yeah see bhatti created humor so he it was a character humor you know he is the yeah. way he looked at world you know so bhatti is a character comedian yeah so normally on television you have sitcoms sitcom meaning situation comedy yeah so the humor mm. is getting dictated by the plot mm. so the more plot so what happens the breathing space becomes less mm. you know it becomes circular it becomes you know the there is certain predictability yeah. no, no, no problem with that but then that's a different kind of humor But I think physical comedy, and I, I, I don't know. That's a separate thing. Physical yeah. comedy depends a lot on situation, writing of not the situation. Not necessarily physical. As I told you, this whole chapter yeah. thing, it is not physically slapstick. Yeah. Physical using hand. Yeah. You know, it was visual. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, uh, there's yeah. that whatever play you yeah. do and this yeah. was, and there is one which is English more, more you know, the English play kind of thing, yeah. more humor. Coming through dialogues. Through dialogues, yeah. That that was so the. So that is yeah. separate. Yeah. You know, it, uh, here, because the character is this, though, uh, in a way. So that's why Woody Allen films yeah. are more because it's got a pathological character. Yeah. The comedy immediately is inferiority complex. He'll always be telling his girlfriend, yeah. "You should not be like this. You yeah. should be like or whatever, whatever, yeah. or somewhere else, somewhere else." Yeah. You know, anything. Yeah. It's always arty. Yeah. Some I remember yeah. Manhattan one scene I saw. I mean. And he is, he is with his girlfriend in some art exhibition. He is just all yeah. nonsense. Is talking about yeah. art. And suddenly the, uh, the other actress comes. What's her name? Uh, always with her, with any all. Yeah, uh, uh, Dan Keaton. Dan. Yeah. And she is more arty than him, and she <laughs> gets yeah. a complex. Yeah. And they don't <laughs> get along. And you like this painting? Yeah. He suddenly yeah. gets. No, see what I was saying, and to go back to the 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 thing I was saying. What do you mean by physical? By physical, if you mean slapstick. No, no, I don't I mean, mean slapstick. I mean. See, slapstick is physical. Sure, Slap sure. I'm saying, stick. yeah, I'm saying this. Besides that, that's a part of physical. You are going to sit. Yeah. I'm going to play on that. Yeah. You know, see, most of the yeah. silent comedy, the yeah. Chaplin, yeah. are slapstick comedies. Yeah. But they are externally invented. Yeah. This yeah. physical humor. Yeah. It has to be because yeah. there was no. No, but dialogue. I'm saying the intricacy of writing the situation because it's in see basically bathroom humor, toilet humor, and fat man sleeping on banana peel is only going to take you that far. But then but that you is know not slapstick. That's that is what. See, that's that the problem with us is thinking yeah. slapstick is yeah. this. Yeah. You take the great mirror scene which has yeah. been copied by so many. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, again, I think uh, uh, mirror scene between. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know where they. Uh, no, that is slapstick. What will you call it? Visual humor. Yeah. No, even Chaplin's hitting someone and nothing yeah, happening, and then you know the the lamp post most scene. Most of it. So let's not. The problem with critics. Yeah. Is they always they, when they want to criticize a film, yeah. the comedy they say it's slapstick. Because beyond yeah. that, they don't know how to criticize a comedy. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. They, but that's they can't that's, analyze. No, I think that comes no, from. No, they can't analyze yeah. why humor is not working. Yeah. They don't know what is sitcom. Yeah. They don't know what is character comedy. Yeah. Beyond that, see, yeah. They, they, the, yeah. the problem with most of the critics. Yeah. And uh, overall, I'm yeah. not just saying yeah. Indian. In fact, the least literature written on comedy in the world. Yeah. If you want to judge a good book on script writing, you must read a chapter on comedy and how sparse it is. Yeah. It's very sparse. Yeah. Yeah. See, Because that, of most of the Hindi films don't use slapstick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Except Rajendra Nath yeah. or here and yeah. there, who are physical, more yeah. physical. There's very little slapstick. Where is yeah. uh, Akshay? You think you've got that body? Um, Oh, of course, people think food you fights are slapstick, which are not. Yeah. Yeah. You require a lot of yeah. You require a lot of flexibility. You require a lot of imagination. Yeah. You require a lot of these things to use your physique for comedy. You know, there is a lot of uh, ballet. There is a lot of uh, this thing. You yeah. know, dance movement. There is a lot of this. You know, the whole the way the whole uh, the choreography even, happens yeah, even in, in a comedy. Yeah. And yet it looks spontaneous. Even in French theatre, the maximum training has always been for slapstick. The mime and slapstick are the two. uh branches yeah, where that, the actors that, need to change that's not what is the problem here see that is not the whole yeah. problem with the yeah. film most of it it's not but i think it's got to do with not uh, not being able to write situations and thinking that tricks themselves yeah, can it, be it, funny it, 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 you know multiple reasons you have you 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 and like this one and then come to it yeah it's yeah very difficult uh, just 
without a base, what is the use of situation? What is the use of empty comedy? Just making you laugh for two minutes, and that is where the things are going on. Yeah. Most of the firms are not connecting with the audience. The realism you talk because they don't want to touch the realism. See, ninety percent of uh, Indian cinema made Indian commercial firms have got nothing to do with reality. Yeah. My name is Khan, or this marka, or Kumar uh, mm. three or ten or whatever. But they have got nothing to do. They cannot. They are afraid. They are in such vacuum. Those firms are made in such vacuum, such vacuous space. Because they are totally they think they think entertainment is something apart from life. Yeah. They think entertainment has got no relationship with life. Like otherwise, that is the reason why Bin Laden and uh, first we have Obama and whatever they are working to some level. Hmm. You know, hmm. without uh, any any big actors. Hmm. Because they are somewhere getting related. People know. Yeah, ये क्या है? Like this mark, ha, though it is based on a great uh, Dasika film. Hmm. But uh, you need an artistry, and you have to relate it to India. You just can't put it here. You know, mm. you know the whole, the whole. Uh, Tell me something. You know, this whole. Because ninety percent of the films, ninety nine hundred. That's why you can write it in gold. That you cannot get except esoteric. If they say, yeah. but this is the esoteric kind of esoteric cinema. You know the other thing I want to talk to you about is there's this universe of comedy films, right? Like Chaplin's universe was intensely human, very humane, right? Uh, there's a existential universe that uh, Woody Allen creates, right? Then there is this the pathological, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but very existential. I, I yeah. find him slightly unhealthy. You know? No, no, there's nothing <laughs> wrong. Good, yeah. I imagine making a career in so many films out of being unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely, but uh, you know. Uh, the other thing is that nihilistic world of very dark humor, like the Coen Brothers or Tarantino, which is not humor at all, but it is humor. But it is nothing but. When you they use uh, that macabre at times, yeah, you don't yeah. know to laugh or. But yeah. They, but it is not total comedy they make. Yeah. They made that big Lovowski or something. Yeah. Yeah. But it is not. Oh, brother, where are they? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's the same thing with Tarantino. I mean, in a sense, Pulp Fiction is a comedy. If, yeah, if Tarantino, you, I don't see much. You know. I always he is a cineast. He has got nothing to say. I think. Any film you take, he has nothing to say. He has got only influences with which he plays. So I am not interested in director who has got nothing to say. He might be a great technique. Yeah. I, I love when I am watching. Yeah, no, no, I, I hear. Off and uh, Kill Bill or whatever. What is yeah. it? Yeah. Uh, Kill Bill. Uh, part two, those sequences are extraordinary. You know, extraordinary cuts are sometimes. Well, fantastic! I mean, five hundred out of hundred marks, but nothing to say. Then I'm, I'm not interested. Even in Glorious Bastard, lovely scenes he created. The opening scene is so beautiful, and and uh, both the girl characters are so beautiful. Oh, what he did with Hitler, my God! <laughs> he just went berserk. I don't know something because you don't know what to say. Now, see, it required it required content here. Yeah, that yeah, you, you can't escape. Hmm. And he's showing those people the scalping. They are scalping, you know. Yeah. They scalp yeah. those yeah. bed lit, yeah. uh, the bed pit gang. Yeah. No, where is humanism? Where is this and all? I don't know. I, I, I I'm not saying yeah. it, it, uh, he's creating, digging history and all, but uh, I don't know. It doesn't work. No, I, I hear you. Yeah. I don't. It doesn't work. I, I extraordinarily floored by everything else. Yeah. Except this. <laughs> Except the the soul of it. Yeah, I've seen Sin City. I, Experience, but again, slight, slight problem there. Mm. Tell me something. Uh, what before you made your first film, when you were a student of, were there any Hindi films? Any? Uh, yeah, yeah, I've seen. Uh, that child, I remember. And in <laughs> that beautiful scenes, you remember. Yeah, what, I remember Koinur, Mina Gumari. I don't know what she, what she did in magic. She was in Koinur, absolute magic. You know, yeah. probably one of the only light roles she has ever done. You know, maybe she has done here. Yeah. It's very difficult to remember. I always wanted to see Nutan. I see that song and I want to see that film. I've never been able to see. The C A T Cat. C A T. I want to see, but I don't think I'll be disappointed. I know. And with uh, Kishore Kumar. Yeah. But uh, I always uh, Kishore Kumar any scene I would. I remember uh, me like Paigam, old Paigam. Uh, uh, 
It was a beautiful scene as a child I had seen. I must have been in school, late school, you know, 14, 15 years. And uh, there was a lovely scene which you could have just edited out between Dilip Kumar and Vajan Kumar. They are in love and they have sung a song and they are sitting down in the park and it is a totally fortuitous moment. It, 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 didn't, it was not required. She is asking him, uh, there must have been more girls in your life. Beside me, and he says, No, no, you are the only one. He says, No, but there must have been you are. You must have met somebody in school, college. And now, because you see, he's insisting, he keeps, he invents one love affair, and she keeps on getting jealous and jealous and jealous and jealous. You know, I don't know whether they copied it from XYZ, XYZ. You know, yeah. you never know who does what. <laughs> yeah. It's very difficult. But it was, it was a moment which worked for me. Like, I think I, I this is, Paigam has got a fantastic introduction of Dilip Kumar. You know, He's sitting under a lamppost and reading my experiment with yeah. Gandhi. You know. Just those, those times, you know, yeah. you know, five years planning and all. Yeah. And, but this moment, I remember the most. It had a lot of things to say, but this, uh, this moment when I... What were your laugh out loud films? What then I won the telephone scene when I did in January. There was one little bit, a uh, hint of it in Leader. Yeah. I thought people will catch me. Nobody caught me. There was a hint of it in I would have never thought. I would have never. No, I don't. I'm not yeah. copy. I, yeah, I, it isn't. It isn't a copy. But it was similar, you know. Like I, I said, yeah, people will go for me. But I said, yeah, let me do it. I'll do my telephone scene. But there was a little bit of it where Dilip Kumar and is talking to him. They're in separate room and he comes. But it is not by mistake he comes. He deliberately joins yeah. talking on phone. Yeah. Like yeah. That, yeah. That, that. That was a romantic. Uh, uh, romantic, yeah. Yeah. See, man, this is this is a completely. It was thoda chet chat, thoda tha. What about films like Half Ticket? What did you did you? Half see? Ticket, I didn't want to see because it was a remake. Uh, yeah. Denny came from, but I thought Farah Khan told me to see it. I saw it and I fell in love with it. Uh, so you saw it recently? I saw it about three, four years back, five years back, six years back, recently. Yeah. something it must be it is so often said that janavi dayaro is the greatest comedy let's not him. discuss that then. no <laughs> why not no no because, uh, no i want i want to know you when you say that when people go on saying this is the See, how much i'm enjoying comedy and talking to you so that question will never arise with for me as a director oh my medium is now uh, you know controlled by actors because uh, to me that question is very relevant you see, when you ask me that question. It is not even, though I want to make, I, I also want to do very good lighting and you know, take very nice Dutch angles and sometimes this and sometimes you know, make a fantastic whodunit, you know, and a whodunit many fantastic thriller, uh, from Noy, you know, but... Uh, no, what I want to also ask you is that people always say, the Janavi Dayaro, for our generation at least, it's the greatest Indian comedy film made. Do you agree? No, it's not for me to agree. How can you ask me this question? No, but I, as a, you are also an audience of your film, yeah? No, the, you, that is also I, one I'll rule you one that you Any film I watch, I'll, tell, I'll describe what happens. Suppose I'm watching the you know, first scene was the uh, shop opening. Yeah. I'm saying, maybe next scene will be better. I want to skip the scene while watching with you. Mentally, I'm not with the scene. Then I'm watching, oh, you know, when that Taranija thing will come, huh? When Tanisha's introduction is nice, there's nice montage and music and you know, then commissioner comes and all. Oh, that will be nice. Then when that scene comes, I'm escaping into next scene. We can't watch our own films. I'm not being modest. I'm no, not no, really. I, or fair I'm, enough. I'm I will not, accept you your answer. You understand one thing, that it is very difficult for me. I have watched some films 300 times. And that director will be flabbergasted. We are going to, how, how do you, how can you do it? You know, but... Uh, very difficult to see because we are looking minus. You are looking plus when you see it. Yeah. We are only so it is embarrassment for us. But could you? It's make not that I can make remake. No, no, that's no, what I'm not. saying. Hypothetically, no, no, no. imagine a scenario. No, no, no. Don't because then it. magic won't happen. No? no, no. Part two is a different thing because part two gives us a license to probably do something. Yeah. To you know, if, if it happens, if it never happens, never happens. Doesn't matter. If you made your first film today, your first film today, what would it be? Would it be like Janavi? Yeah, I've got many subjects here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it's very difficult, you know, to yeah. choose which one. I've written that about one process. When you made around. Janavi Dayaru, was were there too many subjects as well? No, I was working on another subject. One, one day uh, love affair, it was called Sunday, that time. Hmm. Uh, it was, it was just, I was working on that script 
which was inspired by uh, Kurosawa film. That is also called Sunday. I think Kurosawa mm -hmm. film is called Sunday. But I, I didn't want to go anywhere near it. And uh, I, I wanted to make my own thing. Mm. A comedy, mm. kind of, a warm comedy. And with a lot of surprises in it. See, this is a very important thing you have to understand when you do character. See, what, let's forget comedy. What happens when you script a subject? What is the difference between a Zawathini film or, or Bicycle Thieves or films like that? Even let's take After the Fox or let's take something else and a pure Hollywood film. See, the more they depend a lot on plot. So, the somewhere the, uh, the, the motivation, the characters, the villains all get very, very established. In Bicycle Thieves, what happens when you are scripting, it's very difficult to answer what is next. See, there is a, there is a very different kind of adventure involved in those kids. Because, but when that scene is written, it is the only, see, I'm working, I don't know my next scene. Suppose I have mm. written up to here. But the moment I get that next scene, that is the only scene possible. No, there is a lot of intuition, no problem at all. It is very intuitive filmmaking. But you, you, you've got all the research, it's not that you've not done the research. Yeah, no, I hear you, yeah. Because how will he, he will he ever land up with a soothsayer, yeah? with that fortune teller? That scene doesn't fit. How can he got his bicycle is gone? Is tomorrow is his, you are crying when you're watching the film. What is going to happen to you tomorrow? And they are both sitting in a restaurant and eating. He and his son. How can you? you this scene is impossible to think of. You know? If you're thinking on a plotted, if I'm thinking the way I. Am. But yeah. this is gratuitous. There is a lot of gratuitous and yet necessary. I, I don't know how to define it. Yeah. You see, you follow what I am saying. Yeah. It is unnecessary. You take out that bicycle scene. I'm uh, sorry, that uh, restaurant yeah. scene. Yeah. It doesn't make a difference. But it's the most beautiful thing. Yeah. How will you take it out? It's as good as the last end, yeah. which is so logical and so correct. Yeah. And you take out that restaurant scene where he and his son are going, oh my God, yeah. it's a beauty, you know. And what happens? Very little. See, there is nothing much. Yeah. So again, why it works? It works because of uh, real emotion. Same thing in comedy. Somewhere, why that comedy will work and why that comedy will not work. Very difficult. But sometimes, see, we are not an, an analytical so much. We can't be analytical so much. Otherwise, we'll go mad. Yeah. We'll stop creating. Yeah. But when we fail, we have to realize. So it is your, always what you, uh, you, you think of the right base, right emotion, right this. You're thinking, thinking, thinking. I am writing a comedy now, you know American Heart School, detective, yeah. point of view, yeah. you know, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, Chinatown yeah, or yeah, yeah. You know, Raymond Chandler yeah. and all that. Mm. Now imagine I have made a, I am writing a, a thriller, total thriller plot, extraordinarily heavy plot, I can't tell you. But that is, I that am is, not showing, I am showing this black. The plot, the whole thing is governed by extraordinary plot, my action. But here it is all floating. And again, a point of view, comedy. Imagine I have to do comedy, I have to show murders happening and I have to make you laugh. No, I don't know whether I'll succeed or not. I, no, I can be called very esoteric or very this. I have not seen a film like this. Yeah, even I have. I was just thinking. I have not seen, but, but that doesn't mean it can't be done. Or may, I may be wrong. Now, if I take an ego level, but somewhere there is one conviction, you know, see what happened, there is a conviction, yeah, it can be done. It is, there is something in this. It is not, you are not doing it for ego. I have reached three-fourth of the way, the last one-fourth. You would know the murder before I would know. Because I, I have to play with the murder. I have got eight, nine bodies to create. And every time my body comes out of the fridge. So my, when my characters enter a place and you see the fridge, you know there is a body. They don't know. <laughs> So, I see, now I am getting into a laugh situation. Mm. I have to create laughter. I am not saying I'm, I, there is a thrill involved. Yeah. But you know, you are aware. So, I have to, I am putting a grammar to it. Because I have to create humor. I have to create this. Now, he will take out, he will take out a bottle of water. What is happening? What, see, they are, see, they are not able to see. How much, eight times, nine times, what variations I can play with. Yeah. What I can do, you know. So, that is it.